sometime back in this country, as the economy continues to suffer and people simply can't find jobs, many are moving back home to their parents' house. Well, do you know how many Americans are in that very situation? Find out. All right, I asked the question before the break. How many young Americans are moving back home to live with mom and dad? Well, according to the recent poverty study by the U.S. Census, it's a huge number, nearly 6 million they're in the age range of 25 to 34 and are often referred to as boomerang kids. All right, so it's the number one issue in American homes, getting your financial house in order. And today in our weekly financial fix, the financial ground rules when adult children do move home, when you've got those boomerang kids. Karen Lee, author of It's Just Money, So Why Does It Cause So Many Problems, joining us right now. Okay, so you get a call you know, from your kid, you're thinking, okay, everything's great, I'm coming back home. Right. There's a sinking feeling, sadly, that a lot of parents have because they're looking at the dollar signs, it's gonna cost me. Right, and they're losing their independence of their empty nesting. But absolutely, yeah. the first thing I wanna talk about is they've gotta start with looking at their own finances. Yeah. Can they really afford this? Now I get. So you're already saying there's, there should be an option. Parents well, need to say, yes, you may come home or no. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say Whoa. that whether they're 30, 40, or 50, they're still your babies. Yeah. So there probably isn't a big option. Yeah. But the ground rules would be dramatically okay. different if you ask yourself, can I afford this? And of course, you know, I'm always talking about talking openly and honestly mm -hmm. about money. So the next thing I want you to do is tell your children how it's gonna affect you financially. You're gonna delay your own retirement. Are you not gonna be able to go on vacations, etc. And if so you're laying on the guilt, I just want everyone to know what the situation <laughs> oh is. Gosh. Now, if they're working, but they just aren't earning enough to live independently, mm -hmm. I like to insist on some kind of financial payment, a little rent, yeah. a little help towards food and utilities. It's incentive, isn't it? Because at least it says you're not taking this for granted. Right. I realize money is tight, but even if you go out and get a job where the paycheck is small, right. a good portion of that paycheck needs to come toward rent. That's Help right. out. That's right. So once you've talked to your children about your own financial situation, yeah. I want to, I'm giving you permission. It's time to ask about theirs. What kind of debt are they in? It's very important that you help your kids stay mm -hmm. on top of those debt payments, not be late. So it's not just open the door, okay, come on in, I'll help you feel better, but we got to have dialogue because Actually, this should not be a permanent and situation. I would, I would think the former would be a huge mistake mm. if you just let them in with no ground rules. you got to so. let your kids know that there are conditions right away. Absolutely. So the other thing I'd like to tell you is if your children have an abundance of debt, I encourage you to encourage them to seek debt consolidation help. Oh. I thought that usually cost more money. No, it actually does not. They, really? they uh, talk with your credit card companies, lower your interest rates, but they package uh -huh. everything together, make it easier, and you get involved. Oh my goodness. The other thing you can really do to help your children is insist that they work. Now. There's a lot of people. You're not on vacation because you've come home. you got to find something. And we have a lot of people right now not wanting to be underemployed mm -hmm. due to education. I would yeah. say get a job, get any job. And if they absolutely can't, are there some chores at home that mm -hmm. you've been paying other people to do? Mm. Lawn service, cleaning service. Some and, sweat hours. And maybe you can reduce your budget a little in, in, in uh respect for helping them out. And then you come up with this plan and you say it is up to parents to then say, okay, got, got, got to do a little checks and balances here. Let's make sure this plan is working well, let's, or let's modify it. Let's start with the ground rules of you must set a plan with your kids. Yeah. So the first thing is, are you actually going to loan them money? If you are, mm. I'd like to see a promissory note written up. I'd mm. like to see some interest payments. Uh -huh. Uh, the greatest help you can give them is uh, with some job search assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, there are actually outplacement firms that help people put yeah. the resume together, conduct a better job search. Your own personal professional network. Have you, you know, help, help your children yeah. find a job that way. But most importantly, the last thing on that list, the time frame. Yeah. Give them a time frame. Now, you might not be able to stick to it. Yeah. But at least say three months, six months. And we'll talk about what happens on our last tip if you get past that okay. point. So that last point is oh monitor that, that plan. plan. So hopefully you have all this in writing and you've got to well, right. go through this plan, remind them what the arrangement is, I'd like, and I'd hopefully like to see it's going to be a happy household. like to have <laughs> you have weekly meetings because yeah. what you're saying, and I agree, is there is a lot of resentment that can oh, come yeah. up over this situation. So are they... Okay actively looking for work yeah are they contributing with the chores at home and then as you come up to that time frame okay do we readjust it or do we now have oh to my practice God. tough love you have to crack the whip karen lee always here with some you know <laughs> tough love 
good, valuable lessons, but, you know, we want to keep the family intact. We do. So <laughs> talk. That's, that's the whole idea. Talk, talk about have it. Have a plan. Write it all down. Yeah. Checks and balances. All right. You got it. Karen Lee, thanks so much. Always thanks for having me. All right, get more information by reading Karen's new book, It's Just Money, So Why Does It Cause So Many Problems? Or reach Karen at KarenLeeAndAssociates.com.